Assalamu alaikum guys, it's Dr. Faraz Ahmed and today I am here with a very new video on OAT reading part C. Uh, first of all, let me sorry that I was absent for so long. Actually, I was busy and start, but for last two to three weeks, I was not feeling well. So today I am here with this video. Let's move to the video without. So basically, OET reading part C is considered most difficult part of OET reading exam. But I don't think so. I think it's easier than part B. If you are focused on paper for just 30 minutes and follow the guidelines given below. Uh, guys, let's discuss about the structure of OET reading part C, which consists of two long passages and each long passage consists of 750 to 800 words and having six to eight paragraphs. Okay, this should be very clear in your mind that every long passage consists of six to eight paragraph. Okay, and you have to answer eight questions from each passage. That means that out of six to eight small paragraphs, you have to answer eight question. And question here in OET reading part C are again MCQs type of question. But the difference with OET reading part B is this uh, that in OET reading part B, uh, you have three options uh, to answer the MCQs. And in this uh, part of the test that is OET reading part C, you will have four options and you these four option one option will be your answer and one option will be totally wrong about the question asked and two options will be out of the text out of the paragraph and so you have to identify first of all you have to identify the these two options which are out of the paragraph which are out of the text and then you have to identify the wrong option after this you will have only one option left and it will be your answer okay you will have 30 to 35 minutes to solve these long passages that means you have 15 to 30 uh, 15 to 17 minutes for each long passage to answer your eight questions okay guys let's discuss about the strategies about the guidelines how to solve the oet reading part c to get maximum score guys please follow these guidelines and then you will certainly uh, see that oet reading part c is easier than oet reading part b first of all keep in mind that there is no need to read the whole passage of 750 to 800 words first of all what you have to do is you have to number the paragraph uh, in each passage like paragraph number one paragraph number two and paragraph number three four five six and so on after numbering the paragraph you will read the question number one then read the paragraph number one from the passage with full concentration keep in mind that question would be in proper order according to the paragraph numbers okay like your question number one will be in accordance with paragraph number one question number two will be in accordance with paragraph number two after read, uh, reading the paragraph, you have to read the MCQ's options and then answer your question. First of all, number the paragraph, then read the paragraph according to the number of question, then read the MCQ's option and then answer. So you have to score at least 5 out of 8 from each passage to uh, take yourself at a safer side. If you are scoring uh, less than 5, then you have to score more in paragraph 2. Okay? So guys, so this type of the paragraph having 750 to 800 words, having 5 uh, to 7 paragraph are given in your reading part C. So what you have to do is don't read the whole passage. First of all, number the paragraph like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So let's move and see so first of all you have to number the paragraph like paragraph number one two three four uh, five six and seven so this okay after numbering the paragraph what you have to do you have to read the question number one and you will encircle the important words in question after uh, underlining or after encircling the question and words are important phrases important points in the question then you will read the paragraph number one with full concentration and you will see for that important point which you have underlined 
I have to read the first question which is question number 7 and then we will move forward. Let's have a closer look of the question. Question number 7. So what is question number 7? What point is made about the death of female patient called Mary? Underline the important point. What is important point here? It is important point about the death of patient. You have to search for point about the death of patient in paragraph number 1. Okay. Let's read the paragraph number 1. In a very documented case in November 2004, a female patient called the Mary was admitted to the hospital to receive treatment from a, uh, for a brain aneurysm, which followed was a tragedy <coughs> made worse by the fact that it need not have occurred at all. Okay, the patient was mistakenly injected with the antiseptic chlorhexidine. It happened the hospital says because of the confusion over the three identical stainless steel balls in the procedure room containing the clear liquids, chlorhexidine, contrast dye and the saline solution. Doctor tried amputating one of the Mary's leg to save her life but the damage to her organs was too great. She died at 19 days later. Okay. So we were searching uh, about the point of death of the patient. So let's move to the options now. Option number one, it was entirely preventable. Okay. Option number B, nobody was uh, willing to accept the blame. Uh, blaming was not discussed in paragraph. So B could not be your answer okay surgeon should have tried harder to save her life surgeon has tried to save her life after amputating his le her leg uh, this couldn't be your answer it is type of the incident which is becoming increasingly common no about the increasing incident of this type of the uh, death was not discussed in the paragraph you follow the paragraph uh, to answer out of the paragraph okay so b couldn't be your answer c couldn't be your answer and d couldn't be your answer so a it was entirely preventable i think a is the option let's move to the paragraph again first of all uh, we can see that here they have discussed which was followed followed was a tragedy made worse by the fact that it did not have occurred it means that it was entirely preventable so our answer is what is our answer our answer is a it was entirely preventable okay okay guys let's move to the next question let's read the question what is meant by the uh, phrase effort substitution in the second paragraph so we can see here clearly that uh, examiner is asking about paragraph number two and what is meant by effort substitution let's move to the paragraph two let's have a closer look Okay, and similar incidents are what inspired the Professor Dixon Woods of the uh, University of the Cambridge to set out on his mission to improve the patient's safety. It is going to be a challenge. Many different policies and approaches have been tried to date, but few with a widespread success and often with uh, unintended consequences. Financial incentives are widely used, but recent evidences suggest that they have limited effect. So financial incentives have very limited effect. Okay. There is a danger that they tend to encourage effort substitution. So now effort substitution, uh, so our answer will be in upcoming lines. Okay. In other words, people concentrate on the areas that are being incentivized. Okay. Effort substitution means that people concentrate on the areas they are being incentivized okay people concentrate on the area incentivized but neglect the other areas it is not even necessarily conscious neglect people have only limited amount of time so it is inevitable that they focus on areas that are mired and rewarded limited amount of time and they focus on the areas which are mired and rewarded which are incentivized so let's move to the options now and see Option number one, monetary resources are diverted unnecessarily. There is, uh, we have already read in the paragraph that there is no issue with monetary resources. So option A is correct, uh, incorrect, wrong. Time and energy is wasted on irrelevant matters. This is wrong. Time and energy is wasted. We can see here uh, only a limited amount of time and the focus areas that are mired and rewarded so this is wrong time energy is wasted on irrelevant matters this is wrong 
स्टाप फोकस देयर अटेंशन ऑन अ लिमिटेड नंबर ऑफ इशूज दिस कुड बी अवर आंसर ये स्टाप फोकस देयर अटेंशन ऑन लिमिटेड नंबर ऑफ इशूज विच आर इंसेंटिवाइज एंड वेयर दे आर रिवार्डेड ओके लेट्स मूव टू द ऑप्शन नंबर डी पीपल हैव टू टेक ऑन टास्क विच दे आर अनफेमिलियर विद दिस इज आउट ऑफ टेक्स्ट so i think a is incorrect b is incorrect and d is out of the text so c would be our answer what is c stop focus their attention uh, on limited number of issues which limited number of issues the issues where they are incentivized and they are rewarded so our answer is c to the next question question number 9 by quoting the dickson wood in the second paragraph the writer shows that the professor okay this question is again from the paragraph number 2 uh, which we have already read uh, so we will search for the answer that quoting the dickson wood in the second paragraph the writer shows that the professor let's read the option option number a understand that the professor understand why the healthcare uh, employees have to make certain choices yes we have read in the paragraph that they make certain choices where they are incentivized where they are rewarded and uh, mired okay this could be our answer uh, but before uh, answering let's uh, read the next options option number b doubt whether reward scheme are likely to put patient at risk uh, we haven't read about the patient risk in paragraph so this couldn't be our answer this is out of the text so this is wrong option number c believe that the staff should be paid a bonus for achieving the goals this is again out of text we haven't read anything about a bonus we have this is again wrong and option number d feels the people in the question have made poor choices people don't made poor choices people made choices about uh, the issues where they mired and they are mired and they are rewarded so option d is wrong option b and c are out of text which we have left with is option a the professor understand why healthcare employees have to make the certain choices because they make certain choices where they are incentivized and where they are rewarded and mired so our option our answer is a question answer of question number 9 is a question number 10 uh, what point is made about the checklist in the third paragraph so this question is coming from uh, paragraph number 3 so what point is made about the checklist in the third paragraph so we will search for the point about the checklist let's move to the third paragraph let's read it in 2013 dickson woods and the colleagues published a study evaluating the use of the surgical checklist introduced in the hospital to reduce the complications and the death during the surgery her research found that the checklist may have limited impact and sometimes situation might even get things uh, even make things worse okay checklist sometimes introduced new risk nurses would use the checklist as a box ticking exercise okay they would tick the boxes to say the patient had had their antibodies when there were no antibodies in the hospital for example okay this is important that nurses would use the checklist as a box ticking exercise okay underline it uh, they also reinforce the hierarchies the nurses had to try to get the surgeons to do certain task but the surgeon use the situation as an opportunity to display their power and refuse okay nurses can say surgeon that please do this uh, certain tasks but surgeon will refuse okay let's move to the options now option number a hospital staff sometimes forget to complete them this is out of text fullness about the these checklists was not discussed in the paragraph this is wrong b nurses and the surgeons are both reluctant to deal with them i think this is wrong surgeons uh, should be reluctant sometime but nurses always uh, fulfill the checklist so this is wrong okay option number c they are an additional burden for overworked nursing staff i think this is out of text uh, about the additional burden on the staff was not discussed this could be burden on staff but it was not discussed in the paragraph we have to follow the paragraph so again this is out of uh, paragraph and this is wrong
ऑप्शन नंबर डी इंफॉर्मेशन रिकॉर्ड ऑन देम डज नॉट ऑलवेज रिफ्लेक्ट द रियलिटी यस एन एग्जाम्पल वॉज गिवन दैट समाइम्स नर्सिस टिक ऑन एंटीबायोटिक्स दैट वी हैव गिवन एंटीबायोटिक्स टू द पेशेंट बट देर आर नो एंटीबायोटिक्स अवेलेबल इन द हॉस्पिटल सो ऑप्शन डी इज अवर आंसर द इन्फॉर्मेशन रिकॉर्डेड ओन द चेक लिस्ट डज नॉट ऑलवेज रिफ्लेक्ट द रियलिटी सो दिस इज अवर आंसर okay next question what problem is mentioned in the fourth paragraph and so now we will read paragraph number 4 and what problem is mentioned in paragraph number 4 okay dickson wood and her team spent time in the hospital to try to understand which system in place and how they are used not only does she find the difference in approaches between the hospital but also between the units and even between the shift okay what she find she find the difference in approaches between the hospital between the units and even between the shift okay standardization and the harmonization are two of the most urgent issues we have to tackle okay imagine if you have to learn the each new system uh, wherever you go and when even whenever a new senior doctor is on the ward this introduces massive risk okay what she find she find the difference in approaches between the hospital Uh, between the units and even between the shift are in the same ward okay let's move to the options now problem in mentioned in the fourth paragraph option number a failure to act promptly no they were acting properly but they were acting with different approach this is wrong outdated procedures uh nothing was discussed about the procedure in the paragraph uh, number 4 so this is wrong power communication nothing was discussed about the communication between the staff between the shifts between the hospitals so this is out of text and this is wrong option number d lack of consistency yes problem this was a problem that they were uh, acting with different approaches there was no consistent approach find the difference in approaches there was no consistent approach there was lack of consistency there was lack of consistent approach between the hospital between the wards and even between the units okay so option d is our answer this is the lack of consistency in approaches Okay guys let's move to the next question and read it what point about the patient safety is the writer making by quoting the dickson woods comparison with the climate change patient a point about the patient safety uh, by comparison with climate change so let's move to the paragraph dickson woods compared the issue of the patient safety to that of climate change okay in the sense that it is a problem of many hands it is the problem of many hands with many actors each making contribution toward the outcome and there is difficulty in identifying where the responsibility for solving the problem lies difficulty in identifying where the responsibility of solving the problem lies many patient safety issues arises at the level of the system some arises but police at the level of policy making but policy treat the patient safety as an issue of each individual organization so let's move to the uh, options now option number a problem will worsen if it is it isn't dealt will with, uh, with soon i think this is out of text problem uh, they were not talking about the worsening of the problem uh, if it is not dealt with soon okay option number b it is not clear where, uh, who ought to be the tackling the situation yes it is not clear who ought to be tackling the situation it should be tackled at the level of identifying the problem at the level of policy making at the level of hospital i think uh, it could be our answer but let's read the next option it is hard to know where the best course of action is uh, we haven't read anything about the course of action in the paragraph so this is out of the paragraph and this is wrong many people refuse to acknowledge there is a problem we didn't read anything that people refuse to acknowledge that if there is problem or not so this is again out of text option c and d are out of text and they are wrong option a uh, is wrong it is from text but it is wrong so we have left with only option b and i think it is answer it is answer the answer is it is not clear who ought to be tackle the situation this is answer of question number 12 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन लेट्स रीड इट द राइटर कोर्स द डिक्सन वुड्स रेफरेंस टू द इंटेंसिव केयर बेड इन ऑर्डर टू डिक्सन वुड्स रेफरेंस टू इंटेंसिव केयर बेड्स इन ऑर्डर टू लेट्स हैव अ लुक टू द पैराग्राफ लेट्स हैव अ क्लोजर लुक नो वेयर इज दिस मोर अपेरेंट दैट द इशू ऑफ द अलार्म फैटिक अकॉर्डिंग टू द डिक्सन वुड्स ईच बेड इन एन इंटेंसिव केयर यूनिट टिपिकली जनरेट द वन सिक्सटी अलार्म पर डे काज बाय द मशीनरी दैट इज नॉट इंटेग्रेटेड यू हैव टू असेंबल ऑल द किट अराउंड एन इंटेंसिव केयर बेड मैनुअली शी एक्सप्लेन्स इट डज नॉट कम बिल्ट एज वन लाइक एन एयर एयरक्राफ्ट कॉकपिट Uh, this is not something hospital can solve alone it need to be solved at the sector level so he is talking about the alarm fatigue which hospital can can't solve alone uh, it's need to be solved at the sector level let's uh, okay, let's read the options now the writer quotes the dickson woods reference to the intensive care beds in order to option number a in order to present an alternative view point uh no point uh, no alternative point was given in the paragraph he was talking about the problem solving uh, that hospital can't solve the problem all alone it needs to be solved at the sector level so option a is incorrect he hasn't mentioned anything about alternating view point to solve the problem of alarm fatigue option a is wrong option b illustrate in order to illustrate a fundamental obstacle yes he mentioned the intensive care beds uh, intensive care beds in order to illustrate the fundamental obstacle obstacle what is obstacle obstacle in solving the problem of alarm fatigue uh, obstacle is that uh, hospital can't solve the problem all alone because it needs a sector level approach okay so i think uh, option b is our answer Uh, but before uh, mentioning it as our answer let's read the other options as well option c show the drawback of seemingly the simple solution we haven't uh, mentioned we haven't read anything about the simple solution we are reading about the problem in the question in the paragraph so option c is wrong option d give detail example of how to deal with an issue this is out of text he didn't give any example or any detail example to deal with any issue he is giving the examples of the alarm fatigue uh, to highlight an problem in hospital intensive care unit so option c and d are incorrect option a is incorrect we are left with option b which is our answer the answer is illustrate the fundamental obstacle in solving the problem which is at sector level so our answer is b Okay guys let's move to the next question which is the last question and uh, let's see it what difference between the uh, healthcare and engineering is my uh, is mentioned in the final paragraph difference between healthcare providers and engineering is mentioned in the final paragraph let's move to the paragraph and read it okay dickson woods has turned uh, to professor clarison in cambridge engineering uh, a uh, design center to help fundamentally my work is about asking how we how we can make it better and what could possibly go wrong explain the clarison we need to uh, we need to look through the eyes of the healthcare provider to see the challenges uh, we need to look through the eyes of the healthcare provider to see the challenges and to understand where tools and techniques we use in engineering may be of value this is important underline it we need to look through the eyes of the healthcare provider to see the challenges and understand where the tools and the techniques we use in the engineering may be of value there is a difficulty he concedes uh, there is no formal language of design in healthcare do we understand what the need is do we understand what the requirement are can we think of range of the concepts we might use and then design a solution and test it before we put it in place we seldom see this in healthcare and that's a partly driven by the culture and lack of the training but partly by the lack of time so he is asking that we should uh, think like healthcare provider to solve the problems okay dickson woods agrees that the healthcare can learn much from the engineers okay there has to be a way of two sides talking she says only then we will be able to prevent the tragedies like the death of the mary okay let's move to the options now 
ऑप्शन नंबर वन वट डिफरेंस बिटवीन द हेल्थ केयर एंड इंजीनियरिंग मैंशन इन द फाइनल पैराग्राफ ऑप्शन ए द टाइप ऑफ द सिस्टम दे यूज ओके ऑप्शन बी द वे दे एक्सप्लोर द टेक्नोलॉजी ऑप्शन सी द नेचर ऑफ द डिफिकल्टीज दे फेस and the approach they take to deal with the challenges i think option a the type of the system they use this is wrong the way they exploit the technology this is uh, also wrong the nature of the difficulties they face this is wrong because doctor face the difficulties in engineer engineering based devices okay option d the approach they take to deal with the challenges this is our answer and this was given in the paragraph we need to look through the eye of the healthcare provider to see the challenges this is answer look through the eyes of the healthcare provider to see the challenges so here is our answer d option d is our answer the approach to take to deal with the challenges this is the answer of question number 14 okay guys so this is all from today's video about oet reading part c i hope all the strategies all the guidelines will help you please apply these guidelines while you are going to solve oet reading part c and give your uh, feedback in the comments box thank you very much allah hafiz